just sat down. You got him yet, you got him, so he's just sat down. Now the interesting thing, folks, is we're going to turn off for a second and just watch him for a minute. He's just placed himself in a very, very nice covered area. Now that covered area is potentially going to be an ambush position for him. Uh, and this is what leopards are superior at, is stealth and just laying and waiting and being at one with their surroundings. corner of screen there as well that gives you a little indication that the wind is blowing down onto that water point so any animals that are down there may pick up his scent um, they may get wind of him we'll just see but it's just nice to be in his presence I'm just, do you want me to move back a bit Andrew or are you okay? I don't know if we're going to get a shot going back either Okay, I'll just try, mate, and see what we get. What's that like for you, mate? Yeah, Is that good? Yeah. Okay, you get a little bit better shot of him there. And uh, always really important for me to try and get Andrew into the best... Oh, look at that! That's the face I love. Eee, that boy is good, eh? I love it when that alert alertness comes up there. Just got a vehicle you can see driving into shot down the other side. Now don't worry folks about that because it's the camera angle does actually um, look make the vehicle look a lot closer than he is. We're not surrounding him uh, by any by any means. That vehicle is probably 50 metres away from from us. It just looks like that on the camera, and he's down in a little bit lower position. A fantastic question. Pam in Sussex. Well, well, well. Fantastic to have you on board. You know what? I'm normally Pam on a, on a daily basis in the county right next door to you in the United Kingdom. Great to have you on board, Pam. Um, this is Q. Uh, he has been known in the past as Quarantine. Um, um, we've sort of shortened it to Q because it was a bit of a weird name uh, in the sense it was a bit didn't roll off the tongue like some of the other other names. So we've and uh, if anyone's out there that knows the family tree a lot better, I'm sure you are. Tweet along for me and help me out a little bit. I'm just trying exact family tree. The son of Karula. Um, and I think he is... It was Karula that leapt across the road in front of me. But um, just, to, just to bring you up to speed, Pam, um, this leopard here was the first leopard I saw on, in, in Sabi Sands on, on, my, on my sort of journey uh, on Wild Safari Live. So he's quite a special leopard to me. And uh, he is... It's just a beautiful boy. He's got a special look about him as well. I don't know what it is. I can't really put it into words, but you look, all leopards have got different looks and different sort of shaped heads and different markings. And uh, this boy, to me, he's, he's still far from fully grown, but uh, he's a, a spectacular, spectacular creature. sitting here with him.
Really nice question from Deborah and Ramey. Um, does, does, does Q look a little bit bigger to me? Well, you know what? It's a, it's a fantastic way to sort of give a passage of time and to come back and see whether an animal's put on size or not. Um, I definitely saw Q on uh, while. Safari Live while so I was watching in the United Kingdom um, about two or three weeks ago I think it was and uh, he he looked really lean he looked like he needed a good meal he wasn't like starving or anything like that and uh, he just needed to look, look January, February, March April, just beginning May Um, but he did have an impala kill about two days ago, so he's got a pretty full belly at the moment. And, uh, you know, when he, he gets up to full size, he'll be up to about uh, 80, 80 kilograms. Uh, I've just got to try and convert that in my head for you into pounds. What's that, about 170 pounds, is it? Maybe roughly about that uh, and he'll be a big boy but he's a spectacular creature and I think when you talk to people that um, I don't know we've all got our sort of favorite animals and I suppose I get asked the question a lot you know how many what's my favorite animal and I really don't have a definitive answer on that because I love so many different species but when it comes to cats being in the presence of leopard uh, is something very very special what we're doing right now uh, I converse everyone uh, I, I normally work in kilograms but I do always do a conversion when I can to Fahrenheit or to, to pounds or to feet meters etc um, and I, I'm pretty sure I'm giving a bit of an estimate of 175 ish pounds uh, on on that for the comparison to about 80 kilograms just poking my nose in down here just seeing where he went flat we use that term a lot folks uh, flat cat there he is I'm just gonna just try and nose in down here a little bit and we're just gonna sit with him for a second we're not gonna go too close and disturb him but that's was that pretty nice for you Andrew Beautiful. It's just between you and me. It's pretty nice for me. <laughs> oh my goodness. There he is. Ah, uh, yeah. There's a good chance, folks, that he's going to stay in this location for a bit. So we might sit with him for a little bit. And of course, um, I don't want to sit uh, uh, with a flat cat for too long if he's lying on his side you for obvious reasons there's loads more other things to see out there but we'll just sit with him for a little bit uh, remembering that leopards are hugely opportunistic uh, you'd only have to get a um, a water buck or a, a I'm sorry a, a nyala or a, or any other hoofed animal that uh, walk down here um, he might take that opportunity so always good just to sit and wait and be patient for a little bit It's so wonderful to be doing this. <laughs> you know, to get feedback from all of you out there and just to just get that feedback from Ellen and Jody uh, that just gave me an update on, on his uh, sort of family tree and, and, and what happened, uh, his, his, who he was born to and everything. Thank you so much to both of you just to confirm that um, 
my memory's not going, uh, even though I'm getting on in years. Um, uh, it is Karula's uh, fourth litter, and that was the information that I didn't, I couldn't remember. So thank you so much to both of you for that. Uh, uh, Kanuma's uh, uh, brother, litter mate, uh, and also the son. Of Mvula, and Mvula is that beautiful big boy that we do see, and has been such a star on uh, on Wild Safari Live, as all the leopards have, of course. But um, this boy is uh, is a super cat. He's lying in the cool of a little a little uh, riverbed uh, just down. I'll show you the location on a drive another time where I found him and I, every time I go past that spot I always look there to see if he's lying there again and he was lying in the cool of the sand and he stayed there and then uh, he got up and started to walk but uh, they're just an incredible cat so this is a typical sort of morning for for a cat, uh, for a leopard, you know, walk until it gets too too hot to carry on, lay in a nice cool spot, a uh, little tiny breeze, ever so slightly washing over him now, and uh, he will just lay there until A, uh, either a, a drink, depends on what he wants to do. So we've just got another vehicle turning up, folks. Uh, it's the probably noise you can hear uh, in the background there, um, and it is pulling up another fantastic uh, guide and his his, his guests to to see um, Q. And he's just gone flat down there, so all we can see is his back leg at the moment. Can update you on that. Uh, we saw line, we saw the tail end of that line who was on a bit of a mission. We let him be, and the reason, as I told you, we let him be is because the vegetation got a little bit too too heavy through there, and I didn't want to uh, didn't want to destroy uh, vegetation unnecessarily. That male line was on a bit of a map, uh, mission purpose walking uh, as he was and um, just before we started this morning uh, about uh, 15 minutes before we went live uh, I saw Kanu um, sorry, Karula dash across the road uh, chasing Anyala so so far it's been a pretty beautiful morning and uh, I think we should uh, just wait to see what you say whether we're going to move off or stay here and uh, I'll get an update just now Okay, folks. Well, you know what I think. I think we should um, we should head off. We're just getting uh, some feedback that the majority of people think we should probably move on. And you know what? We we know where uh, Q is. We know that he's he's bunkered down here. We'll come back and uh, try and pick this up this afternoon and uh, see if we can follow on and uh, get uh, Brent out on location again. I'm just going to cruise along the damn wall now, which is always a nice look. See, have a look at some hippos, see if there's any birds there, and uh, move on off. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Just move on. We saw him. We saw a beautiful sighting up on that termite mound. A great encounter. And uh, Q, hour and uh, 
Yeah, right, my watch, I'm just looking at it. I made a bit of a mistake there, I think, yeah. Hour and ten minutes, I do apologise, folks. <laughs> do you know why I said that? It's because I normally started, I used to start a half an hour later. And uh, earlier, I do apologise. I'm just getting used to this different, uh, different start time. So I'm just going to try and get my jacket off because it's definitely warming up here and I just don't want to rip my earpiece out. Just bear with me folks, I'm just removing my coat. Temperature's rising. Temperature's rising dramatically. Okay, we've got a beautiful hippo here. now. I've sat here uh, many a many a day and seen all different numbers in this this dam, Bufflesook Dam, uh, ranging from like one or two to what we've got now to potentially 15, 16. Oh, there's three there. There's a younger calf as well, uh, and always fantastic to watch. Now they will be here in this this beautiful um, sort of cool location protecting their very sensitive skin of course and uh, coming out to graze uh, in the later hours of the afternoon and then off into the night where they can walk for several, you know, several kilometers depending on food availability and uh, and go off and graze. A lot of people think, and you know, you've probably heard a lot of this stuff from the from Brent and and, and the other guides and and uh, Scott. But um, you know, please excuse me if I'm retelling information that we all we all know. Um, but uh, there's just lovely little things about hippos that you've all got a little story about a hippo. I used to look after hippopotamus uh, in uh, in a zoo that I worked at, and I also looked after the pygmy hippopotamus, which is the the cousin of the uh, the common hippopotamus uh, that's found up in West Africa. Much smaller, uh, very very. Di or slightly different body shape, eyes on the sides of their heads being a, being a, a species that spends a lot more time out of the water than in, in the tropical rainforests of re West Africa. And uh, it was great to be able to work with both different species, but um, they still have both have a pretty serious attitude. You've got to be very careful of both of them. And uh, a great, great creature. But uh, they'll move from waterhole to waterhole uh, at night. And uh, there's only a couple in here, but I used to see a good population here. Uh, we've seen some really cool things happen around this dam. We might move on. It's an interesting thing, the, 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 the population fluctuates and I asked the guys uh, how many hippo in what dams and etc and um, concentrations of hippo, particularly in Uganda, like astonishing, absolutely astonishing. Where one bull will be looking after 50 cows. It, just going to go through this dip and just I'll talk on the other side. Get a little bit of break up through that dip there. There's a few. A few areas through here as well, folks. I remember uh, the signal can be a little bit scratchy at times, so I'm going to try and make my way back over to uh, safer ground. Um, we did speed off from Twin Dams and uh, Treehouse Dam, so I might just make my way across that way again <coughs> and uh, see what we can find. But wow, 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 what a morning so far. Three cats, two on camera, one that we saw just before the start of camera that uh, I'll definitely go back up and see if we can find tracks going across the road there. Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful morning. I'm very fortunate to be being back with you. And 
I just also want to tell you about a little bit about the team that are here uh, with us for this next week, and we're so proud to be, always proud to be online, web casting on uh, Wild Safari Live. But we've got two broadcasts on the weekend of the 9th and 10th across the United States on National Geographic Wild. Nat Geo Wild, I'm very, very proud to be doing that. It's uh, very deep in my heart, Nat Geo, and it's going to be a great time. And these sort of working up towards that, finding out where all the animals are, and getting back to know everyone and talking to everyone is uh, makes you feel really comfortable. So there's a great team here, everyone's on location at the moment. It was about, you know, I think we do get a little bit of break up down here, so I might just keep the comms the talking a little bit low through here. But ever so quickly, we had about 15, 18 of us around the fire last night. It was brilliant. folks as I say so when I go through those quiet times I do apologize but it's better me just getting through them same thing here be a bit jumpy through here folks. choppy areas where we'll uh, occasionally get it. I know you all understand and I know you've all been there with us for a very long time with that. So hopefully we're back nice and strong now. I'm moving back up towards uh, Viatilla Dam 
and I really like that. This little road through here uh, takes you up and you, it takes you right through a very, very nice uh, bit of vegetation. Lots of different species of acacia and uh, lovely, lovely vegetation through here. So pretty to see. When, it, when I was here in November, it was very, very different. Uh, we started to get the rains, of course, and it got started to get greener, and then I've got lots and lots of grass here. There's an area that was burnt out right throughout here, uh, so there's some great flush of green grass through. It's looking good. doing drives here in Juma. Well, in back in uh, November, November 1st, I've just pulled up on a bit of an incline here. <laughs> um, so I just stop before we get down into this little drainage line and I lose a little bit of signal. But to answer your question, Velma, um, I came on about the 1st of November uh, and Peter and I did about 30 days straight of drives and then we did uh, Big Cat Week for Nat Geo. I left on about the uh, 10th of December and then went back to the United Kingdom. I've uh, been working in another, my other hat that I've got on there, my other office which is uh, an English woodland and uh, this is my other bigger office and I've come back I've uh, been very privileged to come back and uh, do some more drives back here and uh, work with this incredible team of people on Wild Safari Live and uh, you know it's, it's, it's just a, a great privilege and I I'm, can't believe I'm back. It's great to be here. Might break up a little bit here. a question that comes up uh, and I really like to answer it so let me just stop quickly here we're just in this bit of shade um, Janet from Boston thank you Janet and welcome aboard great to have you and I, I really need to uh, talk, turn to camera to answer this and I'll be I'll be as concise as I possibly can um, I'll just turn this other radio down ever so slightly Janet's question is, do you think that zoos are important to conserve species or, uh, in, uh, in the wild? You know, zoos have changed considerably over the last you know, couple of hundred years. Um, we've got a situation now where we've got amazing uh, uh, science that goes to the conservation of species in the wild. There'll be projects going on throughout South Africa, throughout uh, all of Africa, that is funded by zoos around the world. Uh, what's needed, uh, whether it be the preservation of a particular plant species, or whether it means uh, working with another species that that, other, that animal relies on. So there's loads of stuff that goes on that we don't even know about. When we look at the sort of shop front, for want of a better term, of a zoo, um, they've changed considerably as well. Now, you know, 10 years of working in a zoo for me really did mean uh, it was a platform for me to get an understanding of why the importance of zoos are. Now, it's, it's all very well for us to sometimes um, uh, sort of have our opinions about zoos. I'm talking about zoos that are doing a good job. 
one has to think that there's a lot of people that will never ever get a chance to come to Africa. There's a lot of people that never get a chance to go to Asia or whatever. And sometimes to see those animals in a in a well managed uh, captive situation that have been bred in captivity as well, not caught from the wild. Um, and they're behaviourally enriched uh, on, a, on a very, very high level, you will find that um, those can be uh, educational facilities that actually pave the way for conservation for generations to come to understand the importance, the absolute imperative note of why we need to conserve things on the planet. Now, if we sow that seed in a zoo and that child or that adult gets that message from a zoo, job done. That's what it's about. There's always the other side of the coin as well, like in anything. Television, acting, uh, plumbing, bricklaying, surgery, whatever. You're always going to get good and bad in everything. So when I say zoos, I talk about good zoos around the world that are doing fantastic things, working really, really hard to conserve species uh, on a global level and on a local level in their country. So I do think that they're really important, but I totally understand that people sometimes find it difficult to see uh, animals in captivity. So there's two sides to the story. I don't have an exact answer, but I think that there is a place uh, for them. Uh, obviously, nothing beats this. So thank you very, very much. It's a brilliant question, and hopefully uh, that's sort of given you a bit of a, an insight to what I think about them. Um, but this is just brilliant. And you know what? Wild Safari Live is the conduit or is the, is the connection for us to now be able to deliver this to you and get that same message across. So this is like virtual, virtual tourism, virtual. You're getting out and seeing exactly what we're seeing and we deliver those messages and I hope that uh, what I used to do back in a zoo uh, is coming through exactly the same here. I used to do a lot of talks in zoos, uh, particularly on giraffe and, and elephant and rhino and all different things. And I used to just make sure that um, the message that they people took away was not a preachy message, but just to understand the importance of every different species and how they fit into the ecosystem and the habitat. We need to rely on everything. One thing I have to say, folks, that we need to never forget is all this green stuff around us. All this green stuff around us is probably more important or as important as everything else. And then go deeper than that. What's under our feet? My goodness. That's where it all starts. That's soil type. That's soil that is generating all this beautiful vegetation that everything else is fitting into is... Uh, is nearly more important than everything. So erosion and all those certain controls and the management uh, is very, very Just uh, getting something, a few things off Andrew here. Thank you, mate. So, Andrew, we've had a pretty nice morning, buddy. Wow. Hey? I mean, we haven't, we've seen, you know, a couple of uh, Nyala females and perverts and some nice, you know, Saddlebill stalk. And, uh, but wow. Three lovely cats. <laughs> Perfect start. Perfect start, mate. I'm just going to head up towards quarantine. <laughs> just want to see if uh, there's any tracks across that road. Uh, any trip? 
many tracks across that road where I saw that leopard go across this morning. Sorry, I'm uh, just looking very, very carefully. It's probably going to be in the shade, whoever it was. She is going to be in the shade somewhere. And uh, I will just go off-road a little bit where I saw her. <coughs> but I have to do something very, very important first. I think imminent arrival of Mr. Pretorius. Peter Pretorius needs my assistance. I've got something in my vehicle that he needs. So I'm going to drive up and drop it off to Pete up at uh, quarantine now. And Pete will come and say hi and he's going to just go and then try and work with the team to get Jigger up and running. They're nearly there I think. for his radio. I'll just have a little just drive around quarantine. You never know. There's a lot of impala up here. Such a beautiful temperature now, folks. I think it's probably heated up to around, I don't know, 19 degrees. If I was to stop in the sun, this is where we took off from this morning, just over to my right. It's probably going to be about 19, 20 degrees now. <coughs> so you may, might see an electric fence here. This electric fence, <coughs> excuse me, please, swallow a fly. This electric fence uh, protects our final control centre uh, from elephants uh, coming through and any large predators. So you might see a little bit of this now. Pete's going to walk out uh, and come and say hi and grab this off us. Here he is. So this fence is... Hello, buddy. Hello, mate. Hello. Oh, sorry. Hey, mate. All right, now you're driving. Hello, How's mate. Going? Good. Everyone's Hello. dying to see you, mate. So. Hello, everyone. And uh, good morning here from South Africa, from Juma, and uh, good afternoon or evening wherever you might be. Uh, yeah, just amazing to be back. Really excited to be back. And um, there's no concern with Jigar. The brink of taking out, but thought rather than try and rush it yeah and then we'll take out this afternoon properly yeah <coughs> see Incredible. leopard this morning straight off the bat then lion gosh uh, we had lions roaring last night for yeah. while we were on the campfire which was amazing and um yeah just a, a pleasure to say hello again great to feel a little bit nervous again yeah yeah I've seen oh, that was... about five times i saw you this morning as well you know i was really nervous it's a cool comment collected but uh, it it's lovely, really lovely to be back. And a uh, uh, great team arriving here, feeling part of a team, some new people that are fantastic. Uh, Nikki and Tara in control at the moment. Uh, Will, Alex, obviously the whole team. It's been lovely to get back mm. right into sort of a family vibe. So it does feel like uh, that, thanks it? guys on the ground here. Yeah. And thanks obviously for all of you around the world that, that makes the extended family sort of happen here, if that makes any sense. Yeah, fantastic. Oh. Now, I think I need to give you a bit of equipment. Yes, is I'm going to grab this. Is there anything else you need? Test, test. <laughs> There's a bit of a plug problem. it in probably. Yeah, an air, an air gap. There <laughs> and, is a um, bit of a problem. Did you see that leopard again? So I watched part of the morning drive and then I went back to the jigger. No, I didn't. So I'm going to go back. I, uh, who knows, mate. But uh, we moved on because I could hear loads of stuff going on. In the 
the radio and I knew Brent was like hot on the trail, the bloodhound, I'm going to call him from now on. <laughs> and uh, he was great. And then, you know, it was just fantastic. And I was just saying to everyone here <clears throat> to turn up to the location and Texan and Aubrey and, and um, Andrew brought us in, made space for oh, us. Cool. I mean, it does feel like part of a big family, mate. Oh. Uh, it's great. No, it's great you... to be back and also um, <laughs> the Sandy Sands. Uh, so. <laughs>
any teachers out there that are watching and if the time slot you know if our all our planets align and the time slot works for your class Please get your class to, to tweet it or send us a tweet or an email to Wild Safari Live. Tell us the class name and where you are and a question on anything. Uh, to have that connection with the kids is hugely important. And I tell you what, the excitement that I, I, I know for a fact when my son's class did it in, in, in the UK and they were just beside themselves to know that you know we were talking to them live. Uh, it's just great stuff. from Kari in Costa Rica. Kari, welcome aboard. So lovely to have you on board. Costa Rica, wow, have I spent some time there. You live in one beautiful country, my friend. Um, I did a documentary there. I'm going to go up this way, folks. Um, I'm going to come back down to visit the hyenas right documentary on a fantastic young lady there that was doing great work, conservation work with uh, squirrel monkeys and um, you live in a magical country my friend so uh, lovely to have you on board and you want to know, your question is what the horse. I'm not talking about the dung, I'm talking about the smell of the horse itself. It's got a beautiful, a beautiful sweet smell about it. And then you get a sort of a more bovine herb. Uh, I can't quite put my finger on what herb that might be, but if you can just sort of imagine um, quite uh, quite fragrant herbs that you might walk through in your garden or something like that. And when you do get that smell, it, uh, it is a really, really beautiful uh, acknowledgement that there is elephant around. The dung smells slightly different, um, as one would expect, uh, but you get that beautiful sort of sweet smell of elephants. And even when I do, uh, you know, I've traveled in India a bit and uh, I've done a couple of bit of work in India with elephants and uh, going to see tigers and, and uh, you just walk up to that elephant and you smell that smell, it just brings back a lot of memories. I used to look after Asiatic elephants, uh, they're very different to African elephants, a um, bit smaller, smaller ears, different attributes but um, you know we'll talk along elephants. I really would like to, it's a bit tricky I know because we haven't seen a lot of elephants and the, 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 the guides have all mentioned that the elephant numbers are quite low at the moment here. They've moved back into probably into Kruger or into different areas for different vegetation. But I'd like to sort of talk about the history of elephants and take us through a bit of a journey uh, of elephants over the next sort of 10 days as well. Even if we don't see them, we'll just talk about little stories. Um, but going back thousands and thousands of years, BC, when, when elephants were first sort of uh, oh, written into history by the likes of Aristotle, and, and he was probably the, the godfather of, of, of uh, elephant science, I suppose you could say, and how he really perceived uh, elephants to be something magical. They've, been, they've got a quality about them that uh, they've been written about for very very thousands and thousands of years and you know later on maybe t this afternoon or or tomorrow we'll talk more about it but, but particularly beautiful when you're sort of sitting in front of an elephant <laughs> to talk about but um here we go there's a nice buffalo just here a couple of really lovely boys just here just arrive up nice and slowly we don't want to disturb them. Just gently get them used to the sound of the vehicle before we turn off. 
So two solitary solitary balls. And this is a good enough distance for us. We don't need to get any closer. We can get a nice picture from here. Both of them are sitting there, a little bit of body in the water. You've got some red-billed oxpeckers on their backs there, foraging through that hair for, for parasites. And uh, they're ruminating at the moment. Now, I mean, I'm sure a lot of you know uh, you know, the bovine species or the bovine group of uh, the cattle group all over the world are uh, ruminants and that is a re really efficient digestive system. It's a, it's a word to explain uh, their digestive system and, and basically it's a several chambered stomach that they have. They have the the ability to regurgitate their partially digested food and chew it over again. Hugely efficient digestive system, and that's what he's doing now. He's regurgitated a, a lump of rumen up into his mouth and is chewing it over again. So these animals have the ability to break down cellulose, which is plant material. Plant material, very, very difficult. ruminant and then you've, you know, go right down into the small, small, tiny royal antelope uh, ruminants as well. So they're just chewing their cud. You might have heard that term before. You might have even driven past a, a bunch of cows in a field near your home or in the countryside or wherever you you live in the world uh, and be and see those cows doing the same thing. Well, these buffalo are doing exactly the same thing. A couple of solitary bulls that have been either separated from the herd or past their use-by date, I suppose, is a terrible term to say, but when I say use-by date, they, they might have been challenged by another bull and pushed out. I have to say, uh, great these guys, uh, and they are ferocious when it comes to protecting themselves. I do love buffalo. I think people, anyone that knows me, uh, knows I bang on about buffalo a fair bit. Uh, I do love being in their presence. I do find them incredibly social and, and really, really nice to be around, particularly when you're in a big herd. So always feel free to send us any questions you've got. That's a really important thing. That's what makes this beautiful project, Safari Live, so important that we can interact with you live. And you can send us tweets to hashtag Safari Live, or you can send us questions, emails, that is, to questions at wildearth.tv. Back, sorry. Just move along, Andrew, just along the body there a little bit. You'll see those swarms of flies. The birds sometimes disturb them. And uh, that's got to be pretty. Just while we're sitting here, folks, I'm just going to give Brent a call and see if he's got any updates. Brent, Brent, do you copy? Brent, Brent, do you copy? Brent, 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 do you copy? 
Okay, I don't seem to be getting much from him, folks, so we might move on and see what's happening down at Twin Dams. But can be comfortable in and we'll just move on and let them be. Uh, lovely question from David in Michigan. Bless you David. Fantastic, mate. To think that um, I could do with one of those Australian hats uh, to keep the flies away. Well, I don't really know anyone that wears those these days. They used to be used by, uh, and if anyone doesn't know what I'm talking about there, David's referring to a hat that used to have corks hanging from it around a, a hat on strings to potentially keep the flies away. Um, it used to be used in the old days. Uh, doesn't get They don't get used very often anymore. But um, uh, I'm actually not... and doing the, the fly wave later on. Beautiful weaver nests up there, which I'm sure Scott has uh, showed you. I just want to try and head down to Twin Downs just while we're looking at the time. I've got about just over 25 minutes to go. So let's just do that. Uh, if that's okay with everyone, I just want to just head on down, have a quick look, and then we'll make our way back uh, towards control. It's been a beautiful morning for me everyone. I really appreciate your understanding and your, your support as I said back in the saddle. This is going to be a good week. This is going to be a good week. I can feel it in my bones. Youngsters just there. I think you can get a little shot, uh, Andrew. They're just moving through the vegetation. There's a couple of adult rams in there as well. Really nice. I'm just going to move on. There's a lot of some lovely. Nyala down here ahead of us all crossing the road as well. Gosh, there's a lot of them. That's all right, mate. Let's go. Just going to give Brent another call, see if I can locate him. Look at these girls. So pretty. find folks I often stop at these beautiful antelopes just because they are so beautiful they're so pretty and that's a really really nice little herd of them all hanging out in this little drainage line in the cool you can see the flies are bothering them hugely as well Gorgeous, you see that lovely little stripe down the side that breaks up the body shape in those, in that dapple light. Everyone different as well. Just like the stripes on the, on the kudu as well, just a very different fingerprint on every animal. Look at
I've got a question from Siberia Zumi. Uh, thank you very much. Great to have you on board. And your wonderful work that you do for us as well. And uh, asking whether the smaller antelope, uh, Dika, Steenbok, uh, uh, whether they are ruminants as well. And the answer is yes, absolutely they are. Uh, really, really effective, efficient group of animals. And more little uh, Nyala down there, but really, really successful group of animals. And uh, I just, just find them fascinating, the ability that they have to, to survive in very, very difficult times and getting the most out of, out of uh, the vegetation. Giraffes are incredible to watch ruminating as well. That big lump of rumen, you can imagine it has to come from their stomach down in their body, uh, you know, down in you know, their torso and then up, up their neck. And you see a big lump going right up their neck and then bang into their cheek power pocket sort of there and they start to chew that over again. All right, I'm looking at the watch now, so I just want to make sure we... Just keep an eye on the time. Getting used to. Uh, I do apologise. I made it. I made a bit of a mistake before. I used to. We used to start at six o'clock, and uh, now we start at six thirty because of the the darkness uh, in the morning. Let's give Brent another try. Just going to just doddle down here to Twin Downs and have a look there. It's always good to check out the water points at this time of the day. You might get the odd uh, animal drinking. You might get a big cat that's come down to drink just before it tries to find some shade. Uh, and we might just see some birds, which is always fantastic as well. Tree, folks, just to always have a look to see if any uh, leopards have put a kill up uh, in a tree or store to kill. Uh, these beautiful jackalberries are fantastic trees for but very comfortable, nice, beautiful, big, long limbs. But uh, there might have been word, I think I heard the guys talking, there was a potential that Karula may have a kill stash somewhere around here. So always keep our eyes out there. Just got a question. Try and find uh, different species of spectacles around the around the world. Um, uh, for example, uh, migrations of animals, or you know, um, I did a, a, a black bear documentary up in uh, Minnesota. That was fantastic. Um, I also did a. A great story, uh, it was only a half an hour documentary on horseshoe crabs in Delaware, I believe it or not, and this mass emergence of horseshoe crabs that come out on a full moon uh, 
to mate and I just couldn't believe it. I've never seen anything like it in my entire life. Whole beach covered in um, in horseshoe crabs. So that was pretty incredible. And then right up on the border, the Canadian border, I was I was uh, in. Uh, There's a lovely buffalo bull over there, just walking across as well. But I'm sorry, I've stopped a little bit shy that that for you, Andrew. But just walking to get some shade as well. It's getting very warm here, folks. He's just. Uh, meandering there at a very very slow pace might find some shade there um, I did a uh, in up in Manitoba which obviously is not is in uh, you know on the border there uh, a story um, in North America that is uh, of um, in, in I'd love to spend more. I would love to spend more. It's an incredible part of the world. We've got different species of antelope dotted through here. I'm not going to stop at every one just because I've seen loads of impala. But um, I just want to give you a bit of a brief as we're driving past. They're all finding a little bit of shade at the moment, so it is getting warmer. also from Riley. Hi Riley, nice to have you on board. Fantastic stuff uh, and a yeah, good question about what's my favourite so North American animal. I'd have to say, uh, I have to say Puma, um, Mountain Lion, wherever you are I suppose. I've got a couple actually Riley. Uh, I'd also have to say uh, Wolf, which I've never seen in the wild which I'd love to see uh, and I'm absolutely fascinated with bears but I have a healthy respect for bears as well I, uh, when I made that documentary about uh, black bears um, I, I came in contact with some black bears very very close uh, so we had a bit of contact uh, not in a bad way but um, I learnt that uh, you know very very important species to, to be very aware And, and beautiful raptors as well in North America. I'd love to see. Um, and the list goes on, Riley. But yeah, that's probably to see a wolf in the wild. I've always wanted to go to Yosemite as well, so I've never done that before, which is something I'd love to do. Right, we're going to move a little bit faster along this road. And uh, I just want to try and see, see if we can uh, get to hyena den just to see this is a hyena den that was quite active when I was here last and then they moved down to a den just below um, sort of uh, treehouse dam area really and then they seem to have moved back to this this den so the guys have told me where, where it is it's a great den it's got great access very easy to get to for us which is great it means that we don't have to disturb the animals uh, we can drive up very very slowly and just see if they're asleep they might be in the den uh, there's supposed to be two pups I think uh, two cubs and two uh, an, an adult female I think I'm not really sure of how many animals are there so we'll definitely have a look and see what we uh, can come up with Thanks for all your questions, everyone. It's been fantastic, and I uh, I really appreciate it. A little bit uh, nervous this morning that I was going to get it all right, say all the right things to you, and welcome and everything. I've been doing this for 20 years, but it doesn't mean that you don't still get a little bit nervous. You never want to get complacent about uh, what a privilege it is to be doing this, and um, hopefully we've. Uh, We've gotten to know each other a little bit this morning and if it's my first time, I was just about to put my indicator on there. <laughs> oh, it's good to be back. Um, 
Steve. I've just gotten to know you this morning for the first time. I really hope that you come back and join us. And uh, after you've watched Safari Live, head off um, online and see if you can look up a little bit of that information I was talking about, uh, Aristotle and elephants. It's quite interesting uh, to hear about those early accounts and early writings about uh, elephants back in sort of two, 3,000 BC. Uh, obviously, some very, very... Uh, some not very pleasant things back in those days, but um, as time goes on, uh, we now have a, a situation where elephants are, and it started back then, elephants are revered as one of the most magnificent creatures on the planet, one of the animals that we have the biggest connection with, and I'll talk a little bit more about that another time. But um, have a little look on that online, it's a nice bit of research for you to do yourselves. And, um, and then for everyone that I do know and that I've been with before and uh, just so good to be back with you and, and have Pete to come up and say hi. Jigger will be, I'm sure, back on the road as soon as the guys possibly can. I know there's about five brains the size of Texas working on it at the moment and uh, including Peter Pretorius, I might add. Uh, they're, they're all, they, Pete knows that vehicle like you know, his own son, his own child, and uh, combined with Peter and Peter Pratt and, and Alex and Eugene and, and everyone there, yeah, I'm sure they're going to have Jigger up and, and happening as soon as possible. Um, little troop of vervets just running up trees here, but I just want to get to this hyena den if that's okay, folks. So we will stop and have a little talk about vervets another time. the more well-known ones. Uh, obviously, uh, black mamba is an animal, a, a species that you know, a lot of people talk about of having to get away from you rather than have a conflict. Uh, you know, I suppose it comes down to a little bit like the black mamba. If we were talking on a scale of, uh, of tolerance and um, understanding, uh, black mamba's probably not your, your animal. Uh, they have a tendency to be a little bit short-tempered and uh, can um, uh, show their, their displeasure uh, at the drop of a hat. But then you've got, we get uh, puff adders, which are an animal that uses a very, very different technique. Um, that animal will be uh, using camouflage. Uh, a lot of people are bitten by puff adders because camouflage Camouflage is their defence mechanism, so you will get a lot of people in living in communal areas or in the, in the, out, the uh, local areas that will tread on them. Uh, you've got different species of cobra, uh, you've got different tree-dwelling snakes as well, vine snakes, uh, boomslang, um, and the list goes on. But um, there's loads and loads of different... If you're into uh, looking and getting apps for your... Um, or your tablet or your device. Um, there's lots of great... It's a really uh, interesting thing to look up. Now, I haven't got a lot of action here at this, uh, at this den site, but I'm just, just gonna... I might just reverse back up, Andrew, if that's okay, and just sit and just see. Sometimes when the vehicle pulls up, they, um, you get one of the pups will pull his head out. Just... Uh, Oh, sorry, a little bit off, off the road there. I'm just going to have to reposition this. One of the things I do have to say that, you know, you can get, you can never get complacent about snakes. And, you know, one night, I, um, we were all walking uh, back from supper and uh, it was a beautiful warm evening and uh, the famous Will Fox, director extraordinaire and operations director and everything else that uh, Will is with the wild everywhere that we were staying in and there was a uh, a uh, spitting cobra just walking um, sort of walking just moving across the grass and Will nearly trod on it 
and I still to this day tell him that I've saved his life but uh, you know uh, you know he'll repay me one day at some point I'm sure with something uh, fantastic I hope he's listening um, but yeah you know you can just drop your guard sometimes we were just talking away talking away and banging your on it so you do have to be very very careful you can't let it overwhelm your your time being here though because you know you've got probably more chance of having an accident on a road than you have uh, getting bitten by a snake out here so that's just something that we need to keep in the back of our minds so uh, yeah okay mate Andrews is telling me they're using the other hole on the other side so I'll move around again and we'll just um, let's just see what we've got. Potentially seen one in the wild. I don't know uh, if you've been on safari, and you might. Have fantastic food for leopards. Leopards love them. Uh, they're a big. They're a lot bigger than you think. Um, and they will use these dens. Uh, make a. a a den or an aardvark uh, home there, and then after that, they depart or move on. You'll start to get um, other animals that will move in. I've seen everything from uh, aardvark to uh, hyena, Africa, uh, wild dog, um, leopard, uh, having using one as a den in, in uh, Zimbabwe when I was there. Um, and it's just incredible, lots of different warthog will also use them uh, as, a, uh, as a place to escape and they'll have an intricate network, they'll know all the, all the ways to go down there. So, I mean, I've obviously got my eyes on it as I'm talking to you, but we're getting sort of close to time uh, now, so I think it's probably nice just to sit here uh, rather than driving around and, and just uh, have a little bit of a chat and a, a bit of a wind down of the morning, a bit of a recap. So we started off this morning um, just sitting there waiting for you as we watched the mist rising and the sun coming up over the horizon here uh, in Juma and uh, in Sabi Sands and for me it was uh, quite a quite a special moment. We just seen Karula fly across a road and into the into the vegetation chasing a, a Nyala and that to me was a fantastic start to the day. And then oh, we drove along the dam wall and we saw that beautiful line, that Matimba male that many a couple of you helped me uh, identify potentially a Matimba male. And then with the help of wonderful Scott uh, sorry, Brent um, and, and all the other guides uh, from other, other properties around uh, brought, brought us into CQ, which has just made my day, absolutely made my day. So I can't thank you enough for uh, experiencing that with me. Um, it's just magic. It's just magic stuff. Look at it. Just a question from Lisa um, about, it's a really good question Lisa, and I don't know if I can answer it in a way that means anything other than a personal love, but why is Q, Q my favourite cat? Um, he's the first cat that I saw here, and he's the first cat I saw uh, with a, a cameraman named Viam, uh, who we both saw together, and today for that to happen to Andrew and I, be my first cat as well again with us uh, as our, our sort of bond as, as camera person and, and presenter works. It's been quite special. Um, he's, there's something about him. I like his attitude as well. He doesn't, he doesn't care. He just walked right past my vehicle one day, so close to me that I could have touched him. Of course I wouldn't, but uh, he was that close. He was in touching distance. And um, that's what makes him so special. He's got beautiful markings as well, so a lot of really special markings down his spine and stuff like that. But just to round up, folks, I just want to say thank you to all of you uh, for having me back, and uh, I want to thank everyone that's uh, helped on this this morning, Nikki and, and Tara in directing this morning, and Will. and all everyone in final control and, and Graham and Emily that are down here as well with their beautiful kids and we've got the whole team, all the presenters, you know, Scott and, and Mark and, 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 and Brent and, and 
podcast. But come back this afternoon. It'd be really great to have you on board. As I said, if I've just met you for the first time, can't wait to have you back. If you're a regular uh, World Safari Live participant, you know, you guys are always welcome. Everyone can get on board this and please share with as many people as you can. And uh, I can't wait to be back with you. Uh, it's just brilliant to be back here. And Andrew, thanks so much, buddy. It's been fantastic, Thank mate, you. to have you on board this morning. And um, all the wonderful people that's brought this together. It's good to be back, guys. It's just uh, fantastic. And. I tell you what, you never know what's around the next corner. See you soon, guys.